The government is currently consulting on its green paper, Schools That Work For Everyone. This proposes various measures intended to increase the number of high quality school places available. These include a proposal designed to increase the number of faith schools, i.e. schools with a designated religious character. Currently, new faith-free schools, which are oversubscribed, could only use faith-based admissions criteria to allocate 50% of their places. The Green Paper proposes to remove this cap in order to encourage more new faith schools. This is important because faith schools already play a prominent role in the school system. There are over 6,800 state-funded faith schools in England, making it well over a third of primary schools and nearly a fifth of secondary schools. The Education Policy Institute has today published a report that looks at these issues. We have the report author, Becky Johns, to talk us through. So Becky, thank you for talking us through your report today. What are your key findings? Our report looks, first of all, at how socially selective faith schools are in comparison to non-faith schools. And we find that at both a national level and a local level, faith schools on average are more socially selective than non-faith schools. Uh, and pupils eligible for free school meals in particular are underrepresented at the average faith school. We look at the implications of this for pupil attainment, so that although on average faith schools perform better than non-faith schools, once we account for pupil characteristics, a lot of that premium uh, disappears. So we are clear, how socially selective are faith schools and how did you measure this? So we calculated a social selection score for each school. Um, this compared the proportion of pupils eligible for free school meals, FSM, um, that's our best proxy for disadvantage, uh, with the proportion of FSM pupils in the local area that could reasonably be expected to travel to the school. Uh, now a social selection score of 1.0 uh, means that those two proportions of FSM pupils are aligned. Uh, a social selection score below 1.0 means that FSM pupils are underrepresented in the school compared to their local area, and a social selection score above 1.0 means that they are overrepresented. What we found amongst secondary schools was that the most socially selective schools on this measure are grammar schools. Uh, their median score is 0.2, which means that the odds of an FSM pupil appearing in a grammar school uh, are around a fifth um, of those in the local area. Uh, faith schools are also socially selective. Their median score uh, was 0.7, uh, so the odds there are around two thirds. Um, now, the, the dots on this chart uh, show where different schools lie on the spectrum. And what we can see, of course, is that amongst faith schools, there are quite a number that where um, FSM pupils are overrepresented in the schools. Um, at the same time, though, around one in 10 are at least as socially selective as the median grammar school, uh, which is obviously very concerning. Uh, that one in 10 compares with around one in 30 non-selective, non-faith schools. So there's clearly a real issue there. Uh, and we find similar results at key stage two. What does this social selection mean for pupil outcomes and attainment in faith schools compared to non-faith schools? Well, if we just compare faith schools and non-faith schools without accounting for pupil characteristics, um, what we find is that the average performance at faith schools is higher than at non-faith schools. So if we look at this chart here, this is uh, average capped point score at key stage four, um, and we find the first bar faith schools um, is clearly a, a much higher point score uh, than at non-faith schools, which is the second bar. Uh, if we account for pupil characteristics, so for example, FSM eligibility, ethnicity, prior attainment, um, then that, that difference substantially reduces. So our third bar here um, are pupils that attend a non-faith uh, school but have similar characteristics to those at faith schools and we find there that that difference in point score, score is a lot smaller and it's reduced to around one seventh of a GCSE grade in each of eight subjects. If we look at primary school then the difference uh, once we control for those pupil characteristics is virtually eliminated. And finally, if the proposal in the green paper to lift the cap on faith-based admissions goes ahead. What will this mean? Uh, well, first of all, if the cap is lifted, then we can expect to see more new faith free schools. Uh, that will obviously increase the number of uh, school places in the system, and we do know there is a real need for more school places. Um, Questions start to arise when we think about the quality of those school places. Uh, this report suggests that a lot of the higher performance that we see on average at faith schools is due to pupil characteristics. So those new school places in faith schools may not necessarily in and of themselves uh, always represent high quality. Um, similarly, because of the high social selection that we tend to see at faith schools, um, 
we will be concerned perhaps that increasing the number of faith schools might increase the levels of social segregation between schools. That raises questions for social mobility. Um, and clearly the, the difference that we see in faith schools between uh, social selection, those with high, those with low levels of social selection, raises real questions about uh, the admissions of faith schools and whether something can be, attack can be done to tackle um, the particularly uh, severe cases of social selection uh, in the, the faith schools that are worst for that. Thank you, Becky, for talking us through your findings today. Uh, you can find the full report on our website at www.epi.org.uk. You can also follow us on Twitter to keep up to date with the rest of our work. And do get in touch for any further information or if you wish to become a member of the Education Policy Institute. Thank you very much.